Okay, so what company and who made this organ? This is, was made by M.P. Molor. Okay, how many pipes does this organ have? 1,953. Where was it made? It was made in Maryland. Where, what is, where is the organ's current location? It's at First United Methodist Church in Alice, Texas. Okay, uh, who plays the organ here? Judy Holmgreen. Uh, how many keyboards can an organ have? Up to seven, so one to seven keyboards. Okay. Are there any other organs in Alice? Yes, but this is the only pipe organ. Oh, okay. Uh, what is the difference between a pipe organ and a digital computer organ? Well, they sound very similar, but there's a different feel. You can feel the vibrations of a pipe organ. Uh, how often is this organ played? We play it every Sunday. Oh, okay. Um, how do the pipes make the sound? There is a blower that, um, actually I'm going to turn it on and you can hear it. So it's kind of like a big wind turbine and that's what makes the pipe sing. Okay, how about this blower? Well, I'm going to show you. If you will turn it on and you can actually hear it. So that's how loud it is. Brody, why are there two keyboards? Okay, so they are called different things. The top keyboard is called the swell and the bottom keyboard is called the great. There's also a pedal board right here that controls the bass notes. And uh, there can be up to, like, like she said earlier, seven keyboards. But this is a small organ, only about 2,000 pipes. And um, so there aren't like, that many keyboards. So each keyboard has its own sound. Um, and you can edit, the, you can like mess with the sound with these draw knobs. They're called stops. And that's where you get the phrase pulling out all the stops. Okay, but what are, um, why are there weird names on the knobs? Well, if you look closer, there is a weird name and a number. Okay. And, like, for example, this one says oct octaven and two. This one says octave and four. This one says burden and eight. This one says principal and eight. And this one says sub bass and 16. So, the sub bass, sub bass, whatever you want to call it. Now, what are those little white buttons underneath the keyboards? Uh, the white buttons are called pistons, uh, combination pistons. These are presets, and they have a determined stop. And, like, they pull out different stops to change the sound. So each one sounds a little different. And there are some pistons just for one keyboard, some for the pedal, some for... Uh, even uh, for the couplers right here. Now, like I was saying earlier, each uh, stop has a number on it, and the number refers to how long the pipe is. Uh, uh, one, uh, this right here is an eight foot pipe. You can't really hear it. It's uh, just a middle C. A four foot pipe is double that, meaning it's a higher C. A two foot pipe, and there's also 16 foot pipes, which are the bass notes. can't really hear them. I, okay, I can see your feet. Hold on. Let's do your feet. What does tutti mean? Tutti is a term that this organ does not have um, a tutti uh, piston, but it means every, all or everything. It's a word that means all or everything. It means like all the stop, stops pulled out and it can create a really grand sound. And you heard me with all the stops out earlier, but there are these things right here called couplers that if you press them down, they couple the keyboards together, meaning that you play one keyboard and the sound comes out as one. You just have to play one keyboard. And this is the sound that you'd get. Okay, is that what it sounds like with all the stops pulled out? Yes. That is so cool. How do you know what each stop sounds like? Uh, like I was saying earlier, um, each one has a number on it, and that's how you can tell. But also, uh, also uh, you can tell by the names. Once you get used to the stops, you know each one sounds like. There are multiple types of stops. There are like, types of pipes. There um, are flute, flue, string, and reed. 
Now, flute and flute are very similar. They have a similar name. Uh, but the flute pipes have a soft sound, like the principal right here. Um, that's a four foot principal. Is that a, the lowest sound? The that? lowest sound is uh, the 16 foot pipes on the pedal right here. This is the lowest sound. Well, I can barely hear that. Okay, I wanna ask you a question. We're recording again. I wanna know how you got interested in pipe organs. <laughs> Uh, well, we were at church, and the organist of my church, I mean, it's an electric organ, of course, but I went home, and my sister had a little pink keyboard, and I just started playing it. Like, I play it by ear, I don't read sheet music, so I always love the pipe organ. I feel like it has a sound that you can easily customize. Yeah. Okay, so most people I talk to are scared of an organ. Like, they are scared of to play the pipe organ because it is such a powerful instrument. It, it is very powerful and you can like feel it shaking your body sometimes. Like again, with all the stops pulled out, it's shaking, it's really loud, but it's a really complex instrument. It's a really nice instrument to play and you can customize it to have so many different possibilities and so many different sounds that you can get out of it. Like there are like unlimited possibilities on here. All right. I'm, I'm gonna move the camera because I want to see. So, all right, so you taught yourself how to play the piano. Yes, I did. And you taught yourself how to play an organ. Yes, ma'am. Is this the first time you have played a pipe organ? Uh, a pipe organ, yes. I played digital organs and they're different and similar. Like right now in the background, you can hear the blower going. And also there are a few notes that are out of tune like that one right there and uh, it, this is an old organ you can see some like just markings on the keys that show how old I mean there's like some brown outlines on the keys and it's from 19 the 1950s it's from 1958 so I mean it's an old instrument and there are a few stops that don't work such as the chimes they're, they're like bells but I think those pipes are blocked off okay and um, so this is your first time playing a pipe organ. Yes, ma'am. How does it feel? I mean, it sounds different. It sounds How does it feel bit. different than playing an electric electric organ? Well, the, the uh, this part isn't shaking the console, which is the whole part that I'm playing. It's not really shaking the console because on the electric organ, the speaker was under here, so it's shaking kind of the console but you can hear it from different at sides of the church. All the pipes are back, back there and over here so because it's not a big organ, but you still can get an amazing sound out of it. So. That's awesome. All right, now one more question. And um, do you know how hard it is to find somebody to actually tune and work on pipe organs? Yes, because you have to tune every individual pipe in this one, there are almost 2,000 pipes, and this is a small organ. There are some organs that have over 30,000 pipes in them, and you have to tune each individual one. And it's not easy, because tuning a piano can take hours for only 88 notes. Imagine having to do that thousands of times, or hundreds of times. Okay, I lied, I have one more question. So, so you wanted to play a pipe organ, you've got to play this one, and it is a small one. Do, is there since you have a vast knowledge of pipe organs, is there a pipe organ anywhere in the country or in the world that you were like, I would really like to go and play that pipe organ? Um, there are two actually. One of them is being working on is being worked on right now. It is in Boardwalk Hall. It is the largest pipe organ in the world, but unfortunately a hurricane destroyed most of the organ and only 20% of it is playable right now. But there is one organ in Chicago at a Presbyterian church that has five manuals and I think about 20,000 pipes. And that's, that you want to play that? Yes. I think you can make it happen. I do too. There is one more thing that I'd like to show y'all. There are these things called expression shoes down here. And each one uh, corresponds to a keyboard. This one is for the swell right here, which is the top one. And it controls the volume. If you look, if you look up in there, you can see shades opening and closing, kind of like window shutters that open. So this right here is the swell, and this right here is the grate, which is on this side, which is enclosed. So 
um, wait, I, this is a green, and this is a swell. And this pedal right here is called the Crescendo. It gradually adds more stops if you have a few, uh, only a few. Like, for example, I can uh, hit that general cancel button, and let's just say I want these only pulled out. It just gradually uh, pulls out more stops when you're playing, which is what the crescendo pedal that does. Flash. Okay, Brody, it seems like there's a little bit of delay when you hit the key before I hear the sound. Why? Well, um, there's a blower in here, and it has to travel through a wind chest into pipes that lead to the pipes that make the sound. And so there's a little bit of delay that you have to get used to because it can throw you off. Like, it's like you, you're typing, but there's like a delay. It, there's just like a delay that makes it to where it's a lot harder to play because you have to get used to it. And some, some pipes will fill up the air faster. So that's the difference between like an electric organ and the pipe organ. Uh, pipe organs are slightly out of tune, making them sound a little, just a little more realistic. Okay, so do you think that anybody other than somebody who has a ear for music would notice the delay, or do you think really just people who are musicians who actually play it notice it? If you were to play a pipe organ and like touch a key, you notice it. But if you're just listening, you can't really notice it because the organ is just playing what they know. So it's just the person who's actually playing it that has to be conscious of the fact that there's a little yes. delay. And you're working your feet with the pedals and you're playing with both of your hands and you're trying to look at the crescendo pedal and each expression shoe and trying to pull out which stops you want. And you have to memorize which stops are which and where they are. So it's pretty much like a cock cockpit of an airplane around you because there are controls right here, right here, right here, and down there. And how many pedals did you say that were down there? There are 32 different pedals. And how many pedals on a piano? Uh, there aren't pedals on a piano. This is completely different. There are three expression shoes, but they're different than a piano, like a sustain pedal. 30-something pedals. Dang. Okay.